Hey guys, uh, going to talk to you about the best internet privacy tools you can use in 2019. So there have been a lot of changes in kind of the privacy realm in 2018. And so 2019, obviously, there's going to be different, different security threats we need to be concerned about and different tools and changes in existing tools that have uh, changed uh, which tools are the most important and which are the best to use uh, for 2019 as far as internet privacy tools. So today I'm going to focus on quite a few different kind of subsections of tools. So starting with like private search engines, VPNs, private browsers, encrypted file storage, uh, different hardware you can use like routers and uh, encrypted hard drives. Um, secure messaging and email services, password managers, um, antivirus software, ad blockers, tracker blockers, and uh, just kind of some general privacy tools or um, unique ones. So first off, private search engines. Um, 2018, I mean, we saw that internet advertising is more and more intrusive all the time. Uh, so every time you use Google, your searches get tracked, and then if you go onto another website, you're gonna see ads for something that you just searched for. And that caught people off guard for a while, but now people are just used to it. And uh, we think that's a problem. So there are plenty of alternatives you can use that use encryption and uh, that don't store information about you. Uh, some of these include StartPage, DuckDuckGo, Quant is a French one, and then finally Search Encrypt. Um, you should just go check these out, see what you think, kind of try them out. Um, at first, you're going to notice there's a bit of difference between a search engine that knows what you've searched for for you know the past 10 years versus a search engine that doesn't know anything about you and isn't interested in collecting all your information. So just try them out, see what you think. Um, some people love them, some people don't think that the search results are as relevant as they need to be. So it just kind of depends on user preference. Uh, one thing I would note is that start page is a good option if you, uh, you know, are interested in privacy but you don't want to stop using Google. Start page is powered by Google, so the results are all from Google but it's with added uh, security and privacy protection. Uh, next up are VPNs. They're kind of a uh, multi-use tool, I guess, for internet users. Um, if you work for a company and work remotely often, um, you might use a VPN to connect to your uh, company's servers from remote locations. Um, they're also good for preventing the websites you visit from tracking your information. So if you connect to a VPN and then go to a website, the website won't be able to see that your connection is coming from your location instead it'll be uh, from from the location of the VPN so your connection will be uh, rerouted kind of through a series of networks and uh, the website won't be able to track you down. Um, next up uh, privacy focused web browsers um, Google Chrome is kind of the standard for browsers and <clears throat> if you look at kind of the whole ecosystem of Google you'll see that all, most of their tools collect a lot of information about you and Google Chrome does the same thing. Uh, if you're logged into Chrome it's the same as, uh, I mean Google can see every website you visit, every keystroke you, um, you type into your computer. So private browsers like Tor or Firefox or Brave, um, they're not perfect, but they are better alternatives to something like Google Chrome. Um, private file storages, um, if you use Dropbox or like Google Drive, for example, Google Drive is another um, Google product that collects information about stuff you upload on there. Um, other ones encrypt your files so that um, even if the company is able to see that you have files in there, they're not going to be able to see the contents of those files because they're encrypted. So in theory, only you and the file can communicate. Um, 
Um, so yeah, those are good tools if you're needing to store something but are worried about security. Um, privacy and security software, there's a bunch of companies that make encrypted hard drives. So if you're wanting to, I mean if you carry information around on a flash drive, um, you can get an encrypted drive that will require a password or something in order to open those files so that anybody that finds it or gets a hold of it can't just download all your information. <coughs> Uh, next up, secure messaging apps like Signal, Telegram, Wire. Telegram's one that was pretty popular for a while, but uh, recently came or pe faced criticism because they were collecting information or handing information over to the NSA. I'm not sure, something along those lines. So Signal's a pretty well-respected product as far as encrypted messaging goes. Um, it's simple, it works pretty much like text messaging, but uh, contents of your messaging are a little more private. Uh, password managers, if you don't use a passenger, password manager, I'd recommend it. Um, it makes having unique, long, hard to crack passwords a lot easier. And uh, you can use them uh, you know, just for some accounts if you don't want to put all your passwords in there, but they, they're a good option because strong passwords are your first line of defense for everything, so it's important. And then just a couple other privacy tools before we wrap things up. Um, <coughs> Firefox has this cool feature. It's called multi-account containers, so if you want to log on to Facebook without um, Facebook linking or without the browser linking your Facebook activity to all of your other you know, websites you log into, then you can use an account container where it isolates just the Facebook browsing in one window so it won't transfer your data between all those other sites. <clears throat> and then HTTPS everywhere. If you run a website and aren't using HTTPS, uh, you should be because Google Chrome and other browsers are starting to block websites if you don't have uh, SSL encryption enabled so HTTPS is a tool or HTTPS everywhere is a tool that makes it easy to switch and it's pretty simple to use and easy to set up so it's a good option uh, and then finally uh, terms of service didn't read uh, if you read online a lot there's often posts that are um, too long didn't read. They're just quick explanations of the stories that people are sharing. Uh, terms of service didn't read is the same thing just for privacy policies and the terms of use you agree to when you sign up for a service. Um, it's just a tool that checks the privacy policy for basic explanations of how your data is used and stored and uh, explains it to you quickly and in a simple way. So it's a good tool to have. Um, so yeah, those are some options for you if you're trying to keep your information a little more private on the internet. Uh, I'd recommend just, I mean, a quick search on the internet will take you to some good lists of tools if you want specific examples of like VPNs, for example, there's tons of websites that can recommend a good one for you. So yeah, I uh, hope that helped and good luck.